Welcome to the Love Island podcast. In this show, we chat to leaders, influencers, business owners, and organizations who are passionate about Ireland and Irish tourism. Join us and listen to the conversation where leaders in Irish tourism will share their stories, advice, and opinions. You can find us on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram TV, Spotify, Google Podcasts, and Apple Podcasts. Good day, everyone, and welcome to Love Island. Today, I'm speaking to Colette Connolly. Colette has a, a business um, involved with Irish tourism, and she's going to tell us more about it. Welcome, Colette, to Love Island. Hi, Will. Thank you for having me. Yeah, it's strange. Are we talking to, about Ireland and sitting in country, both sitting in countries that are not close <laughs> at the moment? That is true. Yes, it is indeed. So, I mean, your accent gives you away, right? Not only your accent, your name and your and your last name as well. But um, uh, you obviously uh, uh, originally are Irish and um, you're living in New York at the moment. But tell us a little bit about yourself and um, your background and how you started your business journey. Sure. So I'm originally from County Sligo and um, that's in the northwest uh, part of Ireland. And um, I've been in New York since 1986. So I've been here for quite a while and um, I'm both an Irish and American citizen. I came to New York really on a whim. I was much younger back then, obviously, and I just came for a year just to do something different. And here I am um, more than 30 years since then. And my husband is uh, also of Irish extraction. His um, grandparents are from County Sligo too. And we have two children, um, 19 and 24. Um, for most of my career, I've been a copywriter. So I had a full-time job uh, for many years. Uh, I worked with, with schools, actually, in public relations for schools. And I only left that about a year and a half ago. Um, but I, I was always freelancing while I was working full-time. And when I left my job, <clears throat> excuse me, when I left my job 18 months ago, uh, I did so to focus uh, on my freelance business, which I still have, uh, but also to, to create this blog. And I literally created the website. I learned everything I could about WordPress and I said, let's see what happens. And uh, here I am 18 months later. Um, and I have this blog, Ireland on a Budget, and I, you know, wanted to do something a little different. I didn't see anybody else out there doing uh, or blogging about uh, getting to Ireland uh, and focusing on budgets. So I said, why not? Let's let's try and see what happens. And I and I believe that there's many many people out there uh, in the United States and all across the world who are of Irish extraction and really want to see Ireland, but don't know much about it, how to get there, how much it costs when you're there. And that's really what I aim to do with this blog, um, to try and give them as much information as possible and what, when they're there to have the best vacation possible and, and not to spend like a boatload of money, uh, but focusing on the budget uh, all the time. So that's, that's basically where I am at this, at this time. Well, it's lovely because I can also tell you, I've been to Ireland a few times. My brother lives there and um, Ireland on a budget is a great idea because really you also see the real Ireland when you do that, which is uh, fantastic. Exactly. Indeed. So your, um, your blog at the moment, is, is that now your full-time occupation? So if, as it changed from a side business into your, into your full-time business? Uh, it is. I mean, I'm still doing freelancing for other uh, clients. I, I work with small businesses. I do a lot of copywriting for small businesses. But like everybody else, my business has slowed down um, due to COVID-19. Uh, and so I was doing that all along anyway and doing the blog. It was kind of a, more of a secondary thing at the time. But now I'm focusing more on my blog because... I'm using the time while everything is kind of quiet and there's no travel. And I figure, you know, I'm just going to keep building on the blog and creating as much content as I can and driving more traffic to it, basically. So, yes, it has become more of my uh, primary task now rather than before. Well, so I um, I'm spend of your time because most of the content, I've, I've looked at your blog and the content that you're creating are evergreen. 
you know, um, it's it's going to be there forever. So that 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 helps as well, you know. Um, exactly. Exactly. So when somebody is in is planning a trip to Ireland, what are your you know what would you say? What are the most important things that they need to consider when planning a trip? Uh, well, there's a few things. I think that the time of year they need to think about um, when they want to go to Ireland, and um, you know most people take their vacations during the summer naturally, and and summertime is a great time to go to Ireland because the days are long and the weather is generally pretty good. I mean, you know, you've been to Ireland, you can never depend on the Irish weather. Do okay. need to decide when they're going. When is the best time for them? Um, but that. It's probably one of the first things. And I always say to people, um, if, if you want to get a cheaper vacation to Ireland, try going in the spring and the fall when fares are, are less expensive and accommodation is less expensive too. So that's kind of the first thing. I mean, everybody wants to go during the summer and that's, that's great, but the crowds are usually much, you know, more. I mean, there's a lot more people at the popular attractions during the summer. Some of them can get actually kind of overcrowded. I mean, the Cliffs of Moher, um, I was reading there a few months back that they were inundated with tours. Not that they're complaining, but that in some attractions in Ireland, they kind of have to control the number of people going to them now. So if you, if you don't want to be around too many people, uh, you still want to enjoy the popular attractions in Ireland, it might be a good idea to go in the off times and i'm not saying going in the middle of winter um but you could go in say may or september september is a great time to go to ireland the days are still long enough the weather can be actually quite good in september so it's kind of you just never know as we've said already with the weather um if if budget is a concern and if you're on my blog budget is a concern for most people reading the blog I think it's wise to go at those off times and you can still have a great vacation. Um, other things to consider are how many people are traveling with you. If you're a husband and wife with two kids, uh, you've got to think of different things than if you're traveling with just another person or on your own. Um, also, another big thing is, do you want to drive around Ireland? A lot of people who are not um, familiar with, you know, standards, although they've also massive cars there too, but the big thing is they drive on the left. Uh, so Americans are a little um, anxious about that. They're like, oh gosh, you know, I'm afraid to drive in Ireland. The roads can be smaller. I mean, the road system in Ireland has gotten so much better, but you know, they're still in the country. You probably know yourself. You're, you could be driving you know, down a narrow road and meet a tractor or something like that. So it, that kind of scares people and they're not sure if, they, if it's worth it to rent a car. And it really depends on what you want to do. Um, so, you know, you also maybe want to think about, do I want to purchase a packaged tour? And for some people, you know, going to Ireland for the first time, that's a great idea. Um, you know, a prepaid tour, it'll take you to the most popular attractions and you don't have to do any driving. Uh, your meals are provided, well, at least breakfast, and then you have to purchase uh, lunch and dinner. But uh, for the most part, package tours um, are a great idea for many people who are going to Ireland for the first time. So, um, and then again, and budget is also important. Um, you know, you need to set aside savings now if you want to go for a trip in 2021, which it looks like most people may be doing. And I always say 100 euro a day is a good starting point. But if you want to splurge a little, maybe 150 euro a day. I mean, Ireland's, Ireland's not as the most expensive country to go to, but it's not as cheap as other destinations around the world. So mm -hmm. Um, there's some planning involved for sure, but I, I think they're the most important things if you're planning a vacation to Ireland at this point. So, I mean, Europe, like you say, is, is a popular um, um, tourist destination in Ireland as well. So how long in advance should you start planning your trip? Uh, well, everybody kind of does things differently. I, I would suggest a few months in advance of your departure date, um, and that ensures that you get the best deals on air fares and hotels. I often tell people to use, not just go to like Aer Lingus or United or American or whatever airline offers, uh, you know, flights to Ireland from their destination, but to check out other tools like Skyscanner is one that I use a lot. And if you're flexible, um, you can get, you know, pretty decent deals. I mean, you won't get as many deals going into Ireland as you will say going into London because there simply isn't as much traffic going into Ireland as other places. But having said that, 
you can get some deals. And again, it depends on when you're going. But if you're flexible enough and you don't mind, say, stopping over in another city, you might even want to stay for a day or two in that city and then catch, say, Ryanair. You know, there's, there's definitely choices out there. Um, but you need to, you do need to be looking at these things in advance in order to get the best airfares. So I usually suggest that people, it, you know, maybe four to six months ahead is my, is my uh, advice. Interesting. Um, a lot of people are interested in the Irish heritage and, you know, a part of the trip would be to actually find out about the origins of their family and stuff like that. So if people want to do that, how do they go about getting information for, for that purpose? Uh, yes, a lot of people are interested in delving into their ancestor ancestry, and um, I think most people know where their ancestors came from in Ireland. Uh, it, it makes it a lot easier, at least anyway. So maybe you have a great great grandfather who came from County Galway, for example. And once you have that piece of information, um, then you can. There's several resources online that you can um, go to that would help you. And, and then obviously, if you find enough information, you could eventually end up in that destination. There's one great one that I have found. And um, it's called Ireland, I'm just looking for it here. Um, it's called Ireland Reaching Out. And um, it's a rather new organization and the website is irelandxo.com. So the URL is not, it doesn't um, match up with the actual name of it. But in any case, it's staffed primarily by volunteers in Ireland and they are in you know, various places all around the country in small little villages and towns. Uh, you can join the website for free and they have a very active forum. So you answer certain questions. Um, your ancestor has to be, you know, it has, that person has to be dead 100 years ago or more in order to start the search. And then they come up with all sorts of information, um, you know, as much as they can, at least anyway. And it's an interesting website to go to. So maybe your listeners could go there, irelandxo.com. It's free. Um, and it's, they depend on local parish records uh, to find, you know, information on one's ancestors you know that's one resource another one is the national archives of ireland it's also free um it's census.nationalarchives.ie another website's called askaboutireland.ie uh, there's plenty of free resources to start with but i i think that you have to know if possible where your ancestor came from in order to continue with the research and then once you get that information you know, especially this organization called Ireland uh, Reaching Out, uh, I think they've actually had some people come back to, to the places where their ancestors were born and, and then they discovered other relatives who were still living in that village. You know, it can take you down a rabbit hole, I guess, a lot of these websites, but, um, you know, unfortunately too, uh, Irish ancestry is, is kind of tricky. Uh, you can't really uh, find any information before, um, say the 1800s because a lot of the records uh, were destroyed in 1922. Uh, a lot of the ancestry, you know, the, the civil records, the baptisms and marriages, they were housed in the four courts in Dublin. And in 1922, during the Irish Civil War, there was a, a big fire and everything was lost. Now, that doesn't mean that there's no records out there. There are certainly many records. But that was a huge loss. So if you're looking for relatives, you know, way back in the 1500s or something, you know, it's going to be pretty tough. So uh, the best you can hope for is finding out information about people, your ancestors, say, from the 1800s on. And, and that's good enough for most people. You know, most people in America and in Australia, South Africa, you know, wherever, they just want to find out where their people came from. And, and if to, if they can reunite with long lost relatives, hey, that's that's so much better or go back to the place where those people lived. So it's, it's kind of a fascinating journey, I think, that many people take. Um, and, and, and it's also, you know, a, it's very much closely linked to tourism in Ireland. And I think uh, Discover uh, Tourism Ireland's really um, focusing a lot on that now is trying to to get people to come to Ireland and to 
to have done that ancestry research beforehand. So there's there's plenty of information out there, Will, it's, it, and a lot of it is free. So I think people, they don't have to go to ancestry.com. They can if they want, for sure. Uh, but they can start with some of the free resources. And I think the best one for me, uh, to, uh, for anybody looking for any uh, type of ancestry information is this Ireland reaching out. So I would, I would urge them to go there and see what they, what they can find. That's awesome. So that's very nice information. Thank you. So talking about information and services and stuff, besides your blog, um, do you provide any other services to travelers? I don't at the moment, Will. I mean, my main objective right now is to try and put as much free content up there as possible. Um, in the future, I do hope to offer an itinerary service. I mean, I was hoping to do that actually this year. But uh, unfortunately, with COVID-19, that's not possible. Nobody's traveling anywhere. But I'm hoping in, in 2021, that's something that I could offer to people. So based on the knowledge that I have myself and all the information I do put out on the blog. And I think this would be uh, very valuable to people who have never been to Ireland before and who don't know much about the country. You know, how do I get there? How much will it cost? Where will I go? How will I get there? And some people just don't have the time to do the research and they just want somebody to create an itinerary for them. And that's where I would come in. So, you know, potentially they would reach out to me. I mean, I would have it advertised on my site. It's not there right now. And um, I would ask them questions. I would have a conversation with that person. I would say, well, when are you thinking of going? Um, who is going with you? What do you want to see? Um, how much of Ireland do you want to see? I mean, you can see all of Ireland in a week. Uh, you can probably even see it in two weeks. Uh, you do need to have a fair idea of the places you want to go to. And for some people, they just haven't a clue. So I think that that's something I could definitely offer to uh, to readers of Ireland on a budget in the future. But naturally, uh, right now, I, I can't do that. But um, but it is it is something that I, I hope to do. Oh, that's awesome. Apologies for the short interruption, but I do need to mention something. Certainly, we all know that tourism is in a global crisis and we all need to raise awareness about the beautiful country of Ireland. To make it easier for everyone to access your content and also the advice shared by our leaders in Irish tourism, we have created a website where you can access all of our shows and featured articles. Visit us on loveireland.bitmedia24.com we will find loads of interesting and insightful information on visiting and enjoying Ireland. Here is that link again, loveireland.bitmedia24.com. Now, on with the show. So I also saw on your site that you've got this um, section with um, uh, ambassadors, this ambassador section now. What is, what is your relationship with those people? How does that work or is it just information? Right now it's information, but um, so what I'm trying to do is reach out to various businesses in the tourism sector in Ireland and to see if they'd be willing to share their story with me. So I'm more inclined to focus on smaller businesses as I think that they're, they're not as well known and you know, they offer just as much value as another bigger entity would offer. Um, so what I do is I usually contact them. Sometimes they contact me too if they've been followers on my blog and I send them questions and I just ask them to answer the questions and I usually include some photographs of them just because I think that's important people want to see who is this person offering this this service or product and um, so you know I it, it's fairly recent I've just been doing it the last few months um, I think as the blog grows there might be opportunities for me to collaborate with those people perhaps advertise their services or products on the blog in the future. Um, I just think at the moment that's, it, it's probably not doable. I mean, it will become more viable as the tourism industry begins to open up. But uh, I think there's a lot of people in Ireland in the tourism industry that, that people don't know about. And I feel like, you know, this is, I'm on a mission to kind of, you know, highlight these, these people. And many of them are in areas of Ireland that don't get as many tours. So for example, where I come from in Sligo, uh, it's not, <clears throat> excuse me, it's not a place that um, is on everybody's uh, list when they go to Ireland for the first time. Most people 
want to go to Dublin, uh, they want to go to Cork, to Blarney Castle, kiss the Blarney Stone, they want to go to the Ring of Kerry. Maybe they might go to Northern Ireland, they want to see the Giant's Causeway, um, but they don't often have Sligo on their agenda. And so some place like that or Mayo, I mean, there's so many places in Ireland to go to, to visit. There's just so many jewels there that nobody knows about. So in a sense, that's kind of my, my, um, my mission is to highlight the places that not, that don't necessarily get as much tourism as they should. Now in recent years, tourism has increased in say Sligo and Donegal um, and other places, Mayo too. But uh, for the most part, people are going to those attractions like the Cliffs of Moher and all of those places that are really heavily advertised by the tourist industry in Ireland. So I'm hoping that this uh, area of my website will, will highlight what the, the great things that these people are doing. And uh, I'll keep doing it. And as I say, maybe in the future, I'll, I'll, I'll be able to you know, strike up a, a collaboration with them too. I think that would be awesome, you know, it's, I mean, I, I've been out to Ireland many times and I think there's a difference between visiting Ireland or any other place and really experiencing it. And to experience a place, you need to have some more local knowledge, right, to really experience what, what a place is about and, you know, spend time at, at places yes, that may be a bit of yes. The coronavirus has, has really um, impacted our lives and changed everything. And, you know, like you're saying, you're using the time to create content. And I think everybody has to rethink their business models. So um, what are your thoughts on this? I mean, for yourself, your own business, do you have any ideas? But also what would you um, suggest for maybe tourism business in Ireland? What, what, what can they do to, you know, um, to, to, to maybe change their business model a bit or even just stay in the minds of their customers while they're waiting this out? Sure. Yeah. Well, right now I, I have, you, as you can see from my website, I have a lot of affiliate partnerships and um, I'm going to stick with that model for now. Uh, granted, I'm not going to probably make too much money with it at the moment because nobody is traveling. They're not booking accommodation and doing all sorts of other things that are related to travel to Ireland. Um, but in the future, I do see that increasing. And I think the key to that is just creating more content. Um, I, I don't see, it's, 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 it's not an easy solution. It means a lot of work on my part. But I think the more content that's put up on the site will just uh, naturally drive more uh, traffic to us. Um, I see in the future, and maybe next year, that perhaps I could advertise local tourism businesses in Ireland on my site. So maybe, you know, um, somebody has a, a cottage for rent in Ireland and they're trying to get Americans or whoever to, you know, come and spend a week there. Um, perhaps that's something I could advertise on my website, uh, a B and B, um, you know, there's, there's lots of different businesses that would love uh, the exposure uh, that I could give them. And especially here in the U S as well, because a lot of my traffic comes from, from the U S I do have traffic from around the world too, but uh, you know, the site was set up initially targeted to Americans, but I mean, it's really can, it's, it's for anybody who's interested in going to Ireland, no matter where they live. So, um, so yes, the affiliate, the affiliate model will stay for now and I'll continue to do that. And, but, but behind it all, it will be just, you know, creating the best content, valuable content that I can. And, uh, I, I did a survey there recently of some of my email, uh, you know, followers and, and many of them, you know, gave me some good tips and, and what they're looking for. And, and that's what I'll continue to do. Well, that's awesome. I, I think that's, that's, that's right. So I want to ask you another question. You know, we've been living in, in, in the US now for a while, but um, do you still follow Irish sports? I'm sorry, what'd you say, Will? Do you still follow Irish sports? Do you still watch, um, uh, you know, the... the, the uh, yes, yes, <laughs> I do, I do. <laughs> Yeah, there's um, my my son plays Gaelic football. He's 19. He's, he's not at the, this minute, but uh, yes, he's involved with the team. He went to Ireland actually in February, and they 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 didn't they won a couple of games. They didn't win a championship. They were playing against um, Gaelic football teams and colleges in in Dublin and elsewhere. But yes, I do. I follow uh, Irish sports. Uh, it that's. Um, Irish sports here, the GAA in the US is very strong, especially here in the New York area where there's a lot of Irish people. Um, 
I watch Irish news. I get updates on the Irish news. I mean, my parents live there. I'm constantly speaking to them and then my other relatives. So, you know, I don't really miss a beat when it comes to Ireland. And, you know, that's, that's important for me too, because, you know, although I'm writing about travel, I need to know what's going on over there. You know, what are people doing? What are they saying? What are they thinking? Um, yeah, sure, they're, they're thinking that tourism in Ireland, it's kind of shot for this year, especially when it comes to international tours, but they're really hoping that they can salvage some of us and that they're, they can rely on domestic tourism. And by the way, I have followers in Ireland uh, too, who are also interested in, in going on holidays in Ireland on a budget. So, you know, it's not just for um, people who are here in America and um, have never been to Ireland before. There's, a, there's an interest from other people too. And so I think that, uh, you know, the fact that I'm constantly tuned into what's going on in Ireland will help me for sure. That's awesome. Colette, so um, your business philosophy, how would you sum that up? Um, you know, I think my business and my philosophy in general is that there's never a bad time to start a venture. Even, even today, now, even though I started last year, well, it was 2018, the end of 2018, Everything was hunky-dory back then. Uh, but, you know, at the beginning of my journey, a lot of people kind of laughed at the idea of creating a business around the idea that you could go to Ireland on a budget. And, you know, I kind of ignored all of those negatives for the most part, and I believed that it could be possible to create something like Ireland on a budget and make it successful. So I really do. My philosophy is to remain optimistic and uh, that things will return to normal, even if that normal is not going to be the same as it was. But um, for anyone thinking of starting a business, even at these times, I think, um, you know, obviously you've got to do your research, but I, I still believe, I, I'm always positive. I think that it's, it's, you cannot discount something just because everything else looks bad around you. So that's, that's what kind of drives me. That's what keeps me going. I think if you just put in the hard work, it will pay off in the end. And that's kind of been my life's philosophy and, and, and certainly one that, that's behind this business as well. Awesome. So, Colette, um, the, the, I have to push you for, uh, you have to give us an Irish quote as a parting gift. Yes, uh, it, you know, I, I've, there's a lot of quotes that I have in my head and I, there's one that uh, I love and I, I'm not sure who actually said this, but um, and it's, it, it says there are only two kinds of people in the world, the Irish and those who wish they were. And I, I laugh at that one because it's kind of true. The Irish are loved all over the world for the most part. Um, you know, it's a small country, but wow, it's made such a big impact on the world. And, you know, there's tons of Irish people all over the place. I mean, you know, when I travel myself, uh, I, there's an Irish pub anywhere you go. Uh, so it, the influence of the Irish is really something else. And, you know, I think that they're, they're pretty well liked. Most people love the Irish. Um, and that's what, what the attraction is as well for people visiting Ireland. Uh, it's a friendly country. Um, you know, I, I really do believe that, um, Anyone who's Irish is certainly proud of it, for sure. And anyone who isn't Irish, as they say here, maybe they wish that they were. So I love that one. I love that. That's awesome. Let's thank you so much. If people want to get hold of you or want more information, how do they get hold of you, guys? So my website is irelandonabudget.com. And if anybody wants to email me, the email is colette at irelandonabudget.com. That's Wonderful. probably the easiest way. And I'm also on Facebook, Twitter and uh, instagram so um i should be they should be able to find me on those uh, social media channels as well okay that's awesome i'll also leave the links in the description colette it's been a pleasure talking to you and um i'm thank sure you. our listeners will find this fascinating thank you very much for spending the time oh you're very welcome will thank you for listening to today's show we are grateful for everyone listening to our podcast and to appreciate your interest in the beautiful country of ireland Please be sure to subscribe and follow us on all the links below. It would also be extremely helpful if you could share the show and all your links with your friends and family. Mm -hmm.